Hi, Rick here again from Marin for Models, DJI dealer. In this video I'm going to show you how to fit DJI's DT7 radio system to the NASA Light flight controller in the new E300 F450 flame wheel. Now there are two components of the DT7 radio set. You have the transmitter. This is the same transmitter they use in any of the 2.4 gigahertz uh, phantoms and you have the 2.4 gigahertz receiver. Now, where the receiver is a bit different from normal radio set is it is an S-Bus system. What this basically means is, rather than having multiple connections going to the flight controller, it simply only has one. And this single one simply plugs into the X2 channel of either a NASA V2 or the NASA Light flight control system. Now the first thing we need to do is to connect up uh, the receiver to the flight controller. Now I've removed the GPS connector and we'll be plugging this into basically next to, if I filter that around, next to the connector that's already plugged in. That is actually from the LED module and that connector is plugged into X3 and next to that we have X2. So the connector that we'll be using, it's a simple servo connector. These are handed so they basically can only go in one way because you've got that little sort of security key at the side there. And if you look closely at all the sockets in the bottom row, you'll see they're all notched so it can only go in one way. Obviously it'd probably be easier doing this before you actually put the top deck on but I'd already actually built this. 450 flame wheel. Right, so you can now see, if I offer that up, you can now see it plugged into the socket with the receiver. And then it's just a simple case of mounting your receiver on this plate. Now this is why when I build 450s, I put the bottom plate on like that. So you have this part sticking out the front and a part sticking out the back. The reason I build it in this configuration is that if you're going to mount a GoPro, it can mount directly onto there, or if you're going to mount onto a gimbal, the gimbal can mount onto there. And then the hand other handy thing is the receiver can simply mount on the back. Now you can now see I've now mounted the receiver onto the back. I've just used a bit of hook and loop uh, Velcro strap, but you can use anything, double-sided tape, tie wrap, etc. If you are using tie wraps, just watch you don't pull the tie wrap tight too much because the casing isn't a hard case it's actually one of these sort of thin lightweight cases so you can actually uh, distort it so watch out for that the aerials now it's up to you you can tie wrap them up onto the legs i tend to just leave them down like that because it keeps them away from any other parts like the receipt the speed controllers etc just to keep any sort of interference away from it ideally you want your aerials 90 degrees away from each other so if you kind of look at that part of the aerial, I'll just move that up, uh, that is the, the actual part that actually does the work. So you kind of want these away from each other and ideally pointing in different directions. So if you have them kind of like a couple of whiskers like that, it does exactly that. Okay, now the first thing you need to do is to open up the NASA Assistant Light software. Click on that and then just simply, that's it now open. Now it will always prompt you for a software update, but there hasn't been a software update for a while, so just click on OK. Now the first thing we want to do as we're installing the radio is go to the TX calibration. Now if you operate the sticks on the DT7, you'll now see all the sticks moving. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to check to see if the sticks are actually moving in the right direction. So the easy way to do it, if, if I hold the transmitter up, if you push both sticks down into the left hand corner, all the cursors should be on the left hand side. Now you'll see there's two of them here and here are actually on the wrong side. So what we do is we reverse these channels so they're now all say normal and now if I put both sticks to the bottom left hand corner you'll now see all the cursors are now all going over to the left hand side. That now means they're all throwing in the correct direction. Now the next part is we're going to start the calibration so if we basically just click on start and then simply just rotate the sticks in a round direction now if your transmitter has got the uh, 
the lever on the back, if you make this go all the way over, all the way back, and then back again, it will calibrate the X1 channel too. And then we finish there. You can also check as well, the GPS switch here, if I flick that backwards and forwards, you'll also see here, see it moving backwards and forwards, so you've got GPS, you've got attitude mode, and you've got full manual mode. And then we can also check the fail safe. If I just turn the transmitter off, you will now see that that is now in the fail safe position. So if I just turn the transmitter back on, you'll see that's now just popped back to GPS.